Good afternoon. Hello, Oakland. We're here. Oakland is TV at Shoreline Park in Oakland at the Chappelle Roland Hayes Monument Shrine um, Observation Tower. Observation Tower. I'm here with Nancy Nadell who can tell us all the ins and outs and this wonderful place that we're at today. Um, Nancy. Yes, uh, this observation tower was uh, dedicated to my husband's memory, Chappelle Hayes. Uh, he was an, uh, an activist in the community in West Oakland, focused a lot on environmental justice issues. Uh, we have a lot of our youngsters in West Oakland who have asthma, and the uh, constant air pollution coming from the port trucks and, and the ships coming into to the port uh, aggravated that asthma condition mm -hmm. and Chappelle was always on the forefront of bringing that to the community's attention, uh, looking for new solutions for uh, that issue as well as lead in the soil. We had a lot of lead, old lead paint on our houses in West Oakland and, and he did a lot of work in, in bringing that to everyone's consciousness and, and looking for solutions. So tell me, um, that's wonderful work and I can definitely s understand what he was, what was driv driving him for the health of the community with this asthma problem. But how did it happen that we honored him in this way? I mean, you know, I came by one day and just happened to see it on a free shuttle that the port was given some young people mm -hmm. and wondered about it and then came on shore one day and investigated it. And I was just amazed that it was a black guy and he was about environmental with all this pollution and can containers and trucks and it just seemed odd. But anyway, tell me. Well, he, he certainly was on the forefront of the environmental movement and, and one of the first uh, African American people who were really involved in it. Uh, there were, certainly were several others, uh, Carl Anthony also uh, from, from Berkeley, and he worked together, um, there, and there were other people as well. Um, but he uh, was, was honored at this location because uh, he passed away very suddenly from uh, pancreatic cancer when he was 45, and as, uh, after that I became council member and, and thought it would be important for us to have a memorial to him and ask mm -hmm. the port to actually ask the port to dedicate the entire park, park to his name but they, uh, they decided on the observation tower and, and are leaving different parts of the park for other memorial uh, purposes. Uh, it, it was actually quite fitting I thought to have an observation tower named after him because he was a visionary and uh, there used to be another tower um, sort of around the bay that the port had um, prior to the earthquake uh, um, making it unsafe for, for tourists and as, just in, in terms of our family uh, Chappelle and I used to go to that tower to work out our, any difficulties if we had a, a problem that we couldn't solve in the household, you know, and instead of arguing about it, we would go to that tower and get a little perspective and work it out. Right. So it's sort of cool to have this tower named oh. after him uh, for yet another meeting besides just his environmental work, which was certainly very, very oh. important. That's cool. That's cool. So listen, um, how? what do we do now? How do we keep his legacy moving on and how do we incorporate it with things like growing gardens and growing foods and 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 even like with uh, uh, Margaret Gordon she's down she's with the EPA and stuff isn't she? No, Mar Margaret has an organization called the Environmental Indicators Group in West Oakland and uh, she certainly is is carrying on the work uh, we have to keep vigilant and make sure that the port uh, keeps to its promises. That, that uh, actually, after Chappelle passed away, my neighborhood sued the port because they had put out an environmental impact report that said that even though they knew there was significant air pollution, it was too expensive to do anything about it. But after we sued them, they uh, may, uh, did come up with a mitigation fund of nine million dollars to uh, to deal with air pollution mitigations. And the Bay Area Air Quality Management District is now also working very hard with them to to uh, address some of the issues like idling trucks. And uh, one of the most significant ones that, that we are getting very close to solving is the issue of uh, um, the, the emissions from the ships that come into the port. Mm -hmm. Because ships mm -hmm. uh, going across the 
ocean use the cheapest fuel possible mm -hmm. and it's it's very very polluting and mm -hmm. so rather than idle when they're at port which has been the case and they're just spewing out this uh, these emissions oh. uh, there will be new ways for them to um, plug in at the port and be able to uh, turn off their engines mm -hmm. and and therefore that will be a lot cleaner that's called cold ironing and we're very close to uh, getting all the facilities in place for that coal ironing cold ironing yes mm. I hear that there's a uh, shortage getting becoming a shortage of truckers that the generate the newer the younger generations are not falling into wanting to drive trucks so much as some of the other people and people are getting older now have you heard anything about uh, you know I haven't but as, as we uh, developed the army base which is very close to here mm -hmm. and uh, we did as a city just um, uh, finalize an agreement with uh, some developers for the army base uh, there will be lots of jobs coming out of that, including trucking jobs, because the, the vision for our side of the Army base is logistics that can work well with the uh, port. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, there'll be a job center, there'll be training, uh, so hopefully young people who are coming out, and sometimes that's a good profession for somebody coming out of incarceration. Right. Uh, that, that's, there are not a lot of restrictions on, right, on, on right, that. that uh, um, career just for mm -hmm. even if it's a temporary thing that somebody mm -hmm. needs needs to work for a, a period until they really decide what they want to do with their lives uh, but we're, we, we will be having all kinds of job center training programs available for folks so that would the, any of those training programs eliminate that four thousand dollars that they claim that it costs to get to become a trucker to be trained and all of that because that's what they that, you know I was listening I, I don't really know about the those obstacles. Um, there's not a fund available. I mean, th there will be some funds available, but most of it will probably go into establishing the job center mm -hmm. and staffing it. I, I I don't know if there will be scholarships for folks who who uh, would have that barrier and did not have the capital. Uh, but we can certainly look into that. Yeah. Tell me about the McClyman's Chappelle Hayes Clinic. Is that still? Uh, uh, that's still uh, there as well, another wonderful monument uh, to his memory, uh, especially since he was so interested in, in the health of our young people. Right. Uh, that clinic is operated by Children's Hospital, right. and it's one of many of the new clinics in the school district. So is schools. it at Children's or is it uh, at McClyman's? It's at McClyman's, but it's uh, staffed by Children's Hospital, and it's, it's one of the few that is staffed by the hospital and uh, certified by the hospital. There are some new clinics all throughout the uh, city of Oakland at middle schools that, mm -hmm. that just got funded uh, over the last few years. Uh, but th this one is a little bit different in that it's uh, run by Children's Hospital. Okay, and is, m is it more about from for respiratory kind of things? or uh, For anything. It has mental health, physical health. It's, it's, it's and it's there. just for teen? It's there for anyone in the family of the student as well, uh, but it is certainly so it's there, be the uh, there and convenient for the students as the first primary uh, uh, I mean, it's, that's the priority. Students uh, from McClyman? Uh, students from McClyman, or the neighborhood, yeah. Oh, the neighborhood, okay. Mm -hmm. Students from McClyman and the neighborhood, because I was trying to understand it exactly and wondered if it was still operating. I'm oh, like, absolutely. Wow, this yeah. Not only is Chappelle it operating, but, but we, also, we also have a, a study center that just opened next door to that. And I'm working on opening a, uh, a West Oakland Youth Center, uh, not on the campus, but on Market and Brockhurst for um, training programs for young people who have dropped out of school. And mm -hmm. that was another issue that Chappelle was always very interested in. As soon as he, we, as soon as we moved to West Oakland, he started a uh, a program uh, to help young people become entrepreneurs. He he helped them. Uh, he was a woodworker actually by by uh, training and. Uh, he helped them start a small business making uh, frames and, and doing some other fencing and then there was another small business of young people when, when computers were just starting up, uh, home computers, mm -hmm. uh, how to do, um, take minutes at meetings and, oh, and wow. uh, learn how to use a computer that way. So uh, he, he was very involved in, in young people there and this, uh, this center uh, on Market and Brockhurst will be able to train uh, young people so that they can get out of the street trade and, and yeah. be, become functional and, and successful in their lives. I love it. He did a lot. Yeah, he, he was, was a pretty amazing he guy. Was, he sounds like an amazing man. I am so happy that I am happened to just, you know, because mm -hmm. it was before my time, kind of. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I knew that this guy was 
Awesome. Okay. And he also has a wonderful daughter who works for the school district, Sele okay. Nadel Hayes, and I'm sure she will be uh, heard from more in the future. She, yes, she's we're going to have one of her. our future leaders. Yes, she's one of our future leaders and and the uh, offspring of a future of a, <laughs> of a visionary that's gone before us. Hi, I'm Amaranth Modicure, and uh, we're here at Shoreline Park today. A beautiful day, and we're talking with uh, Councilwoman Nancy Nadell uh, regarding uh, her husband her late husband, Chappelle Roland Hayes, and we're just uh, finding out more and more about him, uh, along with the wonderful uh, observation deck that's here at the Port of Oakland, right at the estuary. You can always come and see it. It's here. It's beautiful. It uh, represents a visionary that has gone before us that we need to check back in and follow some of the things that he was thinking about. And learning about and um, Nancy is going to be here to give us a real close in-depth up close um, account of this great man Nancy tell us about that wonderful daughter uh, uh, Sele who uh, uh, we were proud to to uh, give birth to is a um, graduate of the Goldman School of Public Policy at Berkeley uh, she has a master's from from there and is working for the Oakland Unified School District and uh, I think that uh, to a great extent her interest in education was uh, uh, came a lot from her dad and his interest in, in promoting education he uh, had a program at McClyman's High School after school program for young kids uh, to help them uh, learn some skills that, that might help them get a job or, 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 or supplement their their high school time with with a, a part-time job. Many of our youngsters in West Oakland don't have a lot of uh, money, and they they need money for books in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So having us a, a part-time job was was a high priority for him, and also helping youngsters who were about to drop out or who had dropped out get back uh, on course. So um, she grew up in in that kind of environment. As a matter of fact, when uh, when she was very little, we we were called in by her the child care center where where she was. And they said, well, you know, we need to talk to you about Sela. She's not like the other children. And we got really worried. And, and we went in, and the teacher said, well, you know, Sela doesn't play like the other kids do. She keeps lining up the chairs and wants to play meeting <laughs> and, and instead of playing house. And that's, you know, that's how we raised her. We took her to community meetings all the time. And, and so she learned a lot about how, how people organize and, and get things done. And, and I, uh, she has a, a, a good foundation for being a future leader for Oakland. All right, all right, that's perfect. She's beautiful also and a sweet, really sweet girl. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to meet her several times. Um, she's grown, kind of grew up yeah, in my, you can't know, be she was, anymore you know, she's 30. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are you still uh, living in West Oakland? I'm living in the same house that I've always been in West wow, Oakland. Thir 31 years ago, uh, we moved in and I'm still there. You're still there. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's great. It's great. It's really, you've always been really a touchable person, you know, to me. Uh, you know, it's nice when you can have um, uh, any kind of politician that you can have a few words with and you can understand them, yeah. you know, because... Th that they're human and we have a real life. <laughs> exactly, exactly, you know, so, and it's always been a pro thing and it keeps us motivated because right now we've, we're, you know, we've got a lot on our plate this year, you know, with an election year and all of that and... I'm coming up with some ways to just get more people motivated and staying motivated and excited about voting. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing my voter registration thing and, you know, and people are like, oh yeah, I'd like to. Mm -hmm. They just don't maybe know where to go or what they well, need. Voting is so important. A democratic yes. country doesn't make any sense if you don't vote. Exactly. So, and, and now we have instant runoff voting, so people only have to go to the polls one time in November. All the names are on the ballot and, and they can choose first, second, and third choice for their for their council members. Certainly I'm retiring at the end of this year, so uh, there'll be somebody to choose from uh, to, mm -hmm. to replace me, and, and I hope that we have no a, one can a, replace a, a strong you, candidate. Yes. <laughs> Nobody you. can replace you. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're one of our West Oakland institutions, you uh, know, thanks. you've been there loving and caring about us. Um, so listen, uh, uh, Chappelle, um, 
that's a cute hip name. I mean, it's like Chappelle. He's born the same age as he was born the same year as me. That's a good year, 48. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was born in Indianapolis. Uh, I, I don't know too much about his, uh, the history of his name. I, I believe there was a Roland Hayes who was a singer, and that was why the, he was given the name Roland for his middle name. And uh, he had a wonderful voice. He had a really deep, uh, um, they used to call it an FM, an FM voice. <laughs> uh, but he was, he was a great singer and a musician as well. Oh. He played the piano. He played the violin. He was a very talented fellow. Wow. So. Very, very interesting man. Yeah. Unique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, he, but he wasn't a Californian. No, he grew up in Indianapolis. He did go to school here. Uh, he got his uh, uh, college degree here at uh, San Francisco State, and then went on to Berkeley to get a uh, uh, all his coursework towards a PhD. Um, but he he never finished his dissertation. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was another whole area that he, he, I, I mentioned before that he was a woodworker. He he got his uh, PhD in wood science and technology and had invented some equipment to do uh, wood bending in, a, in an ammonia environment to, to do high-end furniture. Hmm. Um, so he, you know, he, was, he was, whatever he touched, he, he, he brought some amazing. innovation to it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing man. And you I mentioned that you're retiring at the end of this year. Yes, I am. So what are your plans? Well, I started a small business. I, I'm uh, still working on promoting Oakland, and uh, it's called the Oakland Chocolate Company, and I'll be working on that. It's a, an eco- economic development project both for Oakland and for Jamaica. I've been uh, going to Jamaica for I don't know how many years since Chappelle died, actually. We had our last vacation together there, Chappelle and, and Saley and I. Uh, one of our friends, a Jamaican-American who used to do my campaign printing, um, Dale Redwood, took us down there to see it. Mm-hmm. And uh, over the last years, I, I met some farmers, some cocoa farmers there who weren't getting a very good price for their cocoa beans, and I encouraged them to stick with it. And I would try to to uh, advertise their chocolate and make make a wonderful product out of their chocolate. So, so that's what I'm doing, and I uh, look forward to doing that more extensively when I get off the council. It's been very hard to do both and do a really uh-huh. good job at both. So. I'll be promoting that more right now. I'm selling at the Old Oakland Farmer's Market and at Art Murmur, and it's getting more and more popular. So it's, Yeah, well, I've had a piece. It's, it's nice to be able to give somebody a piece of chocolate. It makes them happy, and makes they seem to like, like it. Love. It, it, makes it. It seems <laughs> like it makes them happier than, than the progressive policy uh, was also handing out. But I... I uh, I will stay involved in, in open, uh, certainly in the restorative justice work that I've been doing and, um, and and keeping this economic development project going. I think it's very important for us to be working on on developing uh, businesses that are, are um, able to employ people and uh, that we work on becoming a green business, which is you know something I'm also in investigating. Chocolate has, has you know a lot of uh, packaging needs, and yet most of the packaging is not uh, recyclable. So oh. I'm I'm trying to develop some uh, some new, new kinds of uh, packaging as well. Oh, good! That's great. That's inventive. Miss Nadell, could you just tell us a little bit about the restorative justice program that you're working in? Well, restorative <laughs> justice is, is another way of of looking at um, how to deal with somebody who has uh, committed a crime. Uh, right now we have a, a retributive system where we punish somebody, we lock them up and, and put them in a little room and hope that there's going to be some difference in their mm-hmm. behavior. And typically there's not. Uh, uh, there's very little rehab that's done in the prisons and there's very uh, we, we have a very high recidivism rate. Okay. Uh, we also have a lot of problems with our youngsters getting suspended from school and, and the school to prison pipeline that, that ensues. So the restorative justice uh, process and, and probably is something worth yet a, another whole program, and I'm okay. ha- happy to do Got that it. with you, uh, is, is one where when somebody does something uh, against the law, you bring them together with the person that they harmed by breaking that law, uh-huh. and they work out an agreement such that the person who was harmed feels healed. And that doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. require incarceration. Right. Sometimes it's a monetary thing, but often it's a, uh, there's a... Uh, a problem with money in the first place. That's why they might have been uh, stealing or, or doing whatever they did. Mm-hmm. So some other kind of service or, or, or activity that will make that the, the community or the person they harm feel healed. Uh, we've instituted it in, in the uh, Oakland Unified School District as the discipline system. We, we still have a ways to go to fund the... You really need a staff person in each school who will implement the program. Uh, so when, when you have a fight amongst our 
two kids that you can bring them together and and work this out with them but they need an adult to help them do that uh -huh. um, what what's nice about the whole school approach is that you not only use it as a discipline system but you also are creating uh, an environment in the classroom every day uh, where you have a circle in the morning that brings the young people together where you inst uh, um, uh, teach them about certain principles like respect and integrity and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the values that mm -hmm. we really that want, wa want, want us everybody out. to have mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then you're, so you're building a foundation of character so mm -hmm. that it's not just always coming down on them but mm -hmm. but, but showing them how to, how to live exactly. in a civil society exactly uh, and then if an altercation does arise they can s go back to some of that stuff that you taught right. them uh, and if they can't work it out amongst themselves in the circle then you have this staff person who helps them bring together their families and anyone else who, uh, who might uh, be appropriate to be involved and then monitor that the agreement is kept and, yeah. and we saw such incredible results in, in our pilot project at uh, Cole School uh -huh. we saw uh, s over 70 percent decrease God, in suspensions no mm -hmm. expulsions mm -hmm. no fights on campus all year oh, praise so God. it's really important to try to get it in every school oh yeah that sounds like I want to be a part of it <laughs> You got any job? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm serious about that. The recidivism, that is such recidivism. a part of Chauncey's thing, too. You know, it's like that was some, always something that was deep to his heart and to mine. I spoke to a gentleman yesterday with the IMPACT program. You've heard of it? Now it's all, it was a program that we had uh, some people come on the show with some young people, and they mentor them and all of that. But now I hear it's only in the prisons. Mm -hmm. The funding, they lost the funding for it on the streets. So now it's only given in prison, mm -hmm. you know. But it's uh, that kind of thing. You got to give, you know. You got to have some kind of rehab. Absolutely. You know, yeah. just throwing people in a little cage. Yeah, and then and then when they get released, give them two hundred dollars and and think that they're <laughs> and they go back out. Again. It's like and then yeah. it ends up they ha they yeah. still have no way to make it happen. So they still go and prey on right. somebody else, and they're right back. They're more yeah. comfortable there. They got more of a routine there than they have out here. Yeah. They fit in better, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's a whole other yes. thing. But I definitely yeah. Yeah. want to... Invite us back. I, I, I'll yeah. bring, uh, we have an organization we started called Restorative Justice for Oakland Youth. Okay. Uh, we have an excellent uh, executive director, Fanya Davis, and I'm sure she'd be happy to do a program for you. Sonia Davis? Fanya. Fanya. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would. Great. I definitely. Great. I'm so glad yeah. you came, sure, man. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> So this has been a wonderful, wonderful time spending with someone to give us so much wonderful information close up. So we thank you. We thank Nancy thank you. and our team. It's the team that makes the dream.